provide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory, says Psalm 73, 24. Good morning, and welcome to Tandem Radio. This is your host, Glenn Delakian, here every Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Bridge FM radio stations, and also at tandemradio.com on the web, where you can listen anytime, anywhere, on the good news on business. Welcome to all of you who tuned in today. We're excited to have a special guest today, our Mary Pat Angelini, a good friend and also assemblywoman. Uh, here in New Jersey, and Executive Director and CEO of Prevention First, and uh, we're going to talk to Mary Pat in a second, but the theme for today's show is what's government got for business, and there's a theme that I think anybody tuned in who, who has any business uh, savvy whatsoever is going to want to hear all about and learn what's going on, because whether you're a small business today, years ago, small businesses flew, for lack of a better term, under the radar. But uh, now they're even encroaching in even the smallest of businesses uh, with our current administration and government. And uh, so we need to know what's government got for business, uh, good and bad. We're going to talk about both sides of the coin. And we're going to do that with Mary Pat Angelini in just a minute. But as we do each week, we have two basic goals on the show. The first one is to point people to realize that there are scriptures in the Bible that are filled with wisdom for business owners and for business people that can help to guide you in your walk, not only in your Sunday morning services and not only in your home life, but also in your business life as well. And I think those principles are key to character and to uh, helping people achieve things uh, in this world in the right sense. And so our goal is to point you to those scriptures each week. And also, our second goal is to bring experts on from different fields, uh, from around, uh, around industries and marketplace all over, where we can glean wisdom from them to help maybe get some nuggets out of them of success that can help us and our businesses come Monday morning. So our goal in that sense is a very practical goal that by the end of this show, you'll have something you can take to work with you on Monday and use it to benefit your business life. So with that in mind, let's start off with the scripture for today. Isaiah 9, 7, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. I'm always amazed at that scripture because that's Isaiah 9, 7, written hundreds of years before Jesus Christ was born, and it was all about Jesus Christ. Romans 13, 11, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for these are, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Now there's a, a heavy weight to lay on the shoulders of our politicians today, our elected officials, I should say. I think there's a difference, by the way. We have an elected official sitting here, politicians I'm not so crazy about. Mary Pat, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Glenn. No problem. It's always good to have you in the studio. I know you bring not only your brightness into the studio, but you also bring some great content to the show, so I, I appreciate that. Mary Pat, just tell our audience a little about yourself. Just I know you've been on several times and will continue to be on because we love having you, thank but you. Uh, just remind our audience a little bit about you. Sure. Well, thank you very much. Um, I was elected to the New Jersey legislature. In, uh, I ran in 2007. I took the oath in uh, January of 2008. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently in my third, uh, third term and um, up for re-election this November, mm -hmm. um, as is the whole entire legislature, uh, mm -hmm. the Senate and the Assembly, as well as our governor. Um, and I also have uh, my... Uh, day job, as I like to say, <laughs> is um, I'm director of a nonprofit. You mentioned prevention first. Mm -hmm. Actually, since you and I have spoken, uh, I've a little bit of a, a twist to that as well. I'm um, president and CEO of Preferred Services, mm -hmm. which is a nonprofit, and Prevention First has actually merged into Preferred. Oh, so wow. we are a uh, um, outpatient uh, behavioral health program. So now we have Prevention as a component as well. So we have a, a broad uh, continuum of services, oh, wow. uh, primarily in Ocean and Monmouth counties. Mm. Um, I serve in the legislature, in the assembly. I serve on the health committee, mm. and I also serve on human services committee. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's a lot to talk about in those two areas, right. your business owners, for sure. Well, thank you, Mary Pat, and it's great having you here, as always. Um, real quick, before we dig into the real topic of today, what's government got for us? I know you were and have been and continue to be um, engrossed in what occurred at the New Jersey shore back in October and throughout New Jersey from the storms and damages and issues. And I know um, we both work in different areas in that respect, but you are certainly much more involved. 
Tell us a little update on uh, the storm, the latest. Sure. Well, obviously, we're, you know, we got through the summer, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk, well, we could have done better. You know, when you think about it, the fact that we had any type of summer at the Jersey Shore mm -hmm. is really uh, miraculous yes. in, in of itself. A lot of people worked very, very hard to, uh, to get the beaches mm -hmm. up and running. Obviously, um, we had that the campaign stronger than the storm to get people to let people know that businesses were open. That right. was really an economic message. Mm -hmm. um, and so now we've gotten through the summer. We need to continue the work. You know, let's get beyond the boardwalk. We have a lot of folks that are still trying to dig their way out. Right. Uh, there's a lot of help that's out there available um, as well. Mm -hmm. um, my concern is at this point, we're coming up on a year anniversary, which is very hard to believe, that uh, you know, folks start feeling a lot of despair mm, if they, sure. they're not where they think they should be sure. in their rebuilding effort. And um, we have lots of help that's out there, and I don't want people to, to um, you know, feel hopeless that mm. there is not someone out there to help. New Jersey just set up a, uh, a hotline for anyone that wants to talk. Oh, great. And that's, I wanted to share that number sure, if I could. And that number is 855-654-6735. One more time. 855-654-6735. Excellent. And that is um, really the, the state of New Jersey was um, very very smart in our approach to rebuilding and looking at some of the lessons learned with the um, the Gulf Coast, with, right. with Katrina. And so we have put into place, now I'm wearing my human service hat, mm -hmm. um, but we put into place some um, helplines specifically for that because we did see, unfortunately, um, six, nine months after Katrina, there was a, uh, a increase in suicide, oh. suicide attempts. So so we want to get the word out that there's there's help out there and mm. no one should feel left alone. Mm, yeah. And, and that's so important, I mean, because it is a long-term recovery. I think, you know, from a distance, people assume things are over, you know, and everything's back to normal. And uh, again, I appreciate it. I mean, I walk uh, on the Jersey Shore mm. boardwalks uh, every other night. So I appreciate what was done down there, watching the construction, seeing things go down, go on. But there's so much more yet to do, and uh, I appreciate you making that clear that this helpline is out there. And uh, there's a lot of resources out there. I know I, we just got another request from Union Beach, and we're, we're, we're putting up another $11,000 to do some more demolition on houses and just doing our best to put together whatever we can. But it is a long-term process. I'm glad you're bringing it up, Mary Pat, because uh, I know the sheriff had told me a while back, we're talking four, five, six year process. Absolutely, and, yep. uh, we got We still have a lot of work to do. We do, and it, FEMA came in, and you know, that was, we all kind of were uh, a little nervous about right. it, because you hear good things and bad things about FEMA, but they actually have a, a template, and um, part of the template is to set up a long-term recovery mm. committee in each of the, the most affected counties, and I, I sit on the uh, executive board there, and um, it is just amazing to see the people that are, are coming in on a regular basis right. um, from across the country to help. Mm, yeah, and, and they're still coming, and that, that is amazing. And uh, thank you. So if you're listening out there across the country, we still need your help. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Come on back to New Jersey. Uh, it's still a beautiful place, but we still need your help, you know, yes. so for sure. and we appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Mary Pat. I appreciate that as well. Um, so in that respect, let's just finish up with the storm. How were businesses affected, and, and how are they doing on the rebound? Well, obviously, it was primarily the small businesses that were the most affected, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at um, where the damage occurred. And, you know, as you very well know, and I'm sure our audience knows, small businesses are the lifeblood of any mm -hmm. community. Right. And so with, with them not coming back, you know, at 100%, that, that affects, there's a ripple effect in mm -hmm. the community. Um, be it employment, be it, you know, donations to local charities. Mm -hmm. So um, it, that's... But again, there there's a lot of help out there. Um, we have the one consistent message that we've gotten in our legislative office is when we you know go out and we try to get information to businesses, they don't want either they don't want to have to deal with the paperwork right. of filing for you know small business loans, whatever, or, or any type of government help, or they they've never received help from the government. They mm -hmm. don't want to. They don't want to be beholden to the, mm -hmm. the government, right. and I can understand that. But um, again, we are there to help. 
Anyone can call their legislative office, their representative. If you don't know who your legislator is, you can certainly call my office at 732 531 1045, and my staff can put you in touch with your legislator. But our staff is there to help. Mm -hmm. That's what my office is there for. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, call my office if you have any questions regarding um, filling out applications, what programs are out there. But there are still a lot of programs out there, and there are a lot of grant programs that basically you don't, you do not have to pay, mm -hmm. pay back. Wow. So we can help you kind of get through that. And um, the New Jersey EDA is also a great, uh, that's a great source. It's njeda.gov mm -hmm. is a really good resource. So it seems like there's a lot of resources out there for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we're already coming up on the uh, end of our first segment, so time flies when we're talking about these important topics. And uh, we have an important topic today, what's government got for business? So uh, whether you were affected by the storm or not, uh, wherever you are, uh, wherever you're listening, you're going to hear some great insights from an assemblywoman from here in New Jersey that I think those insights will be a benefit to you no matter where you live in the United States. Uh, because state governments are set up very similar and, and, and from place to place. Uh, but there are some differences, and we're going to point those out and uh, help you to better understand what government has for business. Because, again, business owners, uh, we can't ignore it anymore, especially uh, the smaller companies. A lot of times, even with this Obamacare, uh, uh, I'll say debacle, uh, we, uh, you know, we were thinking that we were sheltered at that 50 number, you know, anything under 50. But now I'm hearing all kinds of things that will affect companies that have 10 people. So we're going to talk more about that with Mary Pat Angelini, Assemblywoman from the 11th District here in New Jersey. You're listening to the good news on business. Uh, we'll be back right after this break. And uh, listen into this break because... These are, our sponsors are people who are good, committed business owners that can help you with your business. And if you do need any other help with your business, check us out at TandemRadio.com. That's TandemRadio.com. We'd love to help you. We'll be back right after these words. Back, this is your host, Glenn Delakian, here at Tandem Radio, every Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget, Tandem is now expanded for an hour and a half. It goes right till noon. And following the first half hour, we have Dr. Prudy, we also have Frank Congiulosi and Steve Boreas, all with great information about your businesses coming from a health perspective, from a finance perspective, and from a leadership perspective, and they have great information for you. So stay tuned for those segments right after this one, uh, right through till noon today. You want to stay right on this dial, or if you're tuned in at tandemradio.com, you want to stay right at your computer and tune in and listen uh, to a lot of great information. Our guest today, Mary Pat Angelini, who's an assemblywoman here in New Jersey, also executive director at Preferred Services, and... Um, uh, that's a new twist for her, and you can find out more about her on our website. Just click on, there's a link there to her website, and you can find out more about what she does and how she does it. Our topic for today, what's government got for business? And uh, one of our scriptures say, Romans 13, 11. I love this scripture because it really does hold our elected officials accountable. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities that holds us accountable. For there is no authority except that which God has established. Think about that. The authorities that ex exist have been established by God. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing when you think about that. Um, with that in mind, let's continue on with uh, our topic today. What's government got for business? So, Mary Pat, um, New Jersey's done a lot of things, I think, for business over the last couple of years, especially since um, you know, Governor Christie's come in. He's, he's probably been our most pro-business, uh, in my opinion, uh, governor that I've seen uh, in decades. Um, uh, so, what has uh, New Jersey been doing uh, for uh, business owners uh, in the last couple of years? When Governor Christie uh, came into office, he, he, well, he campaigned on small business, you know, the need to build up the, uh, the business um, economy, mm -hmm. the, excuse me, to build up the New Jersey economy. Um, he campaigned on that, but not only did he campaign on that, when he got into office, he put his money where his mouth was, so mm -hmm. to speak. And he immediately assigned to our lieutenant governor, Kim Guadano, uh, assigned her the task to go around the state and really talk to businesses, find out what they need, find out what the issues are with small, medium, large businesses in New Jersey and their um, connections with the government. Mm -hmm. So um, she did that. She created a red tape commission mm -hmm. and uh, went around and I attended several of them and what came out of that was really uh, uh, that was a needs assessment for the most part and what came out of that was to um, to create the small business action center mm. and basically what that is it's a one-stop shopping for any business any size in New Jersey and um, 
they can go to this uh, the uh, website. It's the uh, New Jersey Gov website, nj.gov website, and you can just uh, look for the uh, Small Business Action Center. Um, but they have a phone number. And the purpose of this was to really create a, a portal for any business to be able to go to one number to find out what they need to know. Um, the issues that we found out, and again, particularly with small businesses, you're busy, you know, running your business. Mm -hmm. You don't right. have time to go through paperwork or to, you know, to make five different phone calls, mm -hmm. you know, to get to somebody. Um, so this really is, it's a one-stop shopping. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that phone number, there's an 800 number, toll-free number, excuse me, it's 856 Five three four seven seven eight nine, mm. and that is the uh, New Jersey Business Action Center. Um, and so again, that just streamlines what the complaints that businesses spoke of many times, repeatedly, uh, were issues as it relates to the uh, DEP, right. Department of Environmental Protection, and you know there there. The DEP is kind of, they've got their tentacles everywhere, and it's a very, very large bureaucracy, and so we're, we're trying to, you know, whittle that down um, and to make it easier for businesses that have to do, uh, you know, have anything to do with um, uh, environmental issues around that. Um, but so I would encourage anyone, even if, if a business owner is listening and they're not sure, uh, if they're not sure that there's a... An, uh, something that the government can help them with, right. you know, give us a call or give the uh, the action center a call, or again, give your uh, legislator a call, mm -hmm. and you certainly can call my office as well. Uh, yeah, I think it's very important for business owners to realize that when they have a current concern, they should reach out. They shouldn't just get frustrated. Absolutely. And, and look within. And you know, I love the uh, the theme of that red tape commission. It actually inspired us in our business group in town. Uh, where I live, and we actually created a brochure that was uh, get through the red tape kind of brochure mm -hmm. for new business coming into town. So that was a great pr program and still continues to be a great program. W what are some of the uh, specifics that your constituents are looking for? I mean, uh, either uh, that, that may be some ideas that were thrown out to you by people that you know that, that uh, they're looking for stuff, but it's not available yet. Well, it's what I have heard since I've been in office consistently is get government out of our business. Mm -hmm. So any um, anything that we can do to to raise that to a level of awareness, you know, um, we actually are trying to, uh, on uh, in next week we have a voting session and um, we are going to be looking at the economic development proposal mm -hmm. and that basically is kind of honing in uh, some of the bigger um, uh, economic programs into to two smaller ones. Um, but again, it's the bureaucracy is something that, you know, even if someone has a tax question right. and they can't get through, you know, if they, they can't, it's just customer service on the, the government mm -hmm. side of things. You right. know, when you call Trenton, you know, it's the adage, you know, we're here to help, you know, we're, yeah. we're with the government, we're here to help right. you, you know, right. that's kind of an oxymoron, but, um, but there are programs out there. Um, the, the thing that I've heard too recently, most recently, is concern about the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's going to be on the ballot this November. And I think, I fear that that's going to hurt the the very people that the other side is saying will help. Right, right. Because businesses will take a look. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're a larger business and you're looking to come into New Jersey, you know, that's something that's going to be, uh, you know, looked at. Mm -hmm. um, I also just heard about a proposal in uh, uh, Jersey City where they're looking to um, mandate sick time mm, for wow. small businesses and the, um, uh, the level of uh, employees, you only have to have 10 employees for you to be wow. under this. Um, again, you know, I think most small businesses, mom and pop, you know, places, they probably take care of their their uh, folks That's and if right. someone's sick, they let them stay home or, mm. you know. Um, so again, it's we need to look at the uh, you know the big picture and what these this is you know it's death by a thousand cuts. I mean you know small businesses you see it in you know some of the shore towns again um, Asbury Park. I know there have been a couple of small businesses that have been there for about seven or eight years that are they're just they're closing up because they're they're feeling very frustrated. Yeah, there's nothing I hate to see more than uh, you know driving by a business and gone out of business, mm -hmm. you know, gone, and it's it's just a shame. 
Because again, I don't think the general public, when they hear things like, you, you know, <laughs> I, I always come up with the adage, it sounds good, but it doesn't work, you know? <laughs> and I hate to say what party is the moniker of that, but it's true. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, from a, when you step back and say, hey, we're increasing everybody's wage, that sounds sure. good. But then when you look at it and you realize how that's going to shrink mm -hmm. the workforce and shrink the marketplace and impact business owners, and you're right. I mean, I, I really don't know of any small business owner, and, and myself included, that doesn't provide some kind of health care for their, their employees mm -hmm. in most cases, and, or some type of sick days, or, or lenient on days. Or, hey, if I have a top performing employee and he's sick for a couple of days, I'd be crazy not to help him out, of right? Course. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So, I mean, I guess if you're one of those people who just have that entitlement mentality and all they want to do is collect the paycheck, then an extra couple of bucks an hour makes sense to you. Uh, but if you really want to contribute to the success of the economy, the success of the business in itself, to see your own company grow so you can grow personally, then you got to look at the bigger picture here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. things on the ballot like that have to be realized to, to be what they are, not just, hey, it's an extra couple of bucks in my paycheck. Well, when you when you look at the uh, the health care reform, you know, mm -hmm. that looks right. wonderful. Everyone gets free health care, you know. <laughs> but then you look at what's happening now, you know, as it, we get closer and closer to the implementation, right. we've got companies that are now, you know, you're only going to work 30 hours, right. you know, to get under the, uh, you know, the cap mm. to uh, the mandated, uh, you know, for full-time employees. So, yeah, there, uh, there are a lot of unintended consequences mm. that, uh, and that's why it's very important to, uh, you know, to know who you're voting for. Right. And, you know, one of my biggest fear, Mary Pam, we're coming up to the end of the show already. It always flies by when you're with us, so we got to get you on again soon. But uh, one of my biggest concerns, and it hit me again last night, um, is ignorance in the constituency. And, and I, I don't expect you to say your constituents are ignorant. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying it. But, uh, but the point is, like, I saw this last night, uh, this panel they had, and they had six Democratic college students and six Republican college students. And I was shocked at the statements they were making about things that were not factual. Mm -hmm, you know? right. uh, oh yeah, uh, the health, the new health care does this, and the moderator is going, uh, no, it <laughs> does that. You know, and it's kind of funny because the the leader of the whole movement that got it passed through, as you know, clearly said, well, we'll figure out what it says after we vote right, on it. You right. know? It's like, I mean, so it's kind of that's one of the things that concerned me. And I'm not going to talk about any specific politics, mm -hmm. but just the. Generally, people don't seem to be educating themselves in areas of importance. And then when government fails them, they kind of look at it and go, oh, man, again. you know. But right. if they had taken the time to research these things, and, and I want to thank you so much for giving all these phone numbers and resources because there's where they can get their education. And, and I know you, and I think I know what the answer to this question is going to be. But when someone, a constituent of yours, needs education, can they walk up to you and ask me? Absolutely. And if I don't know the answer, I will get them the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one of the my concerns when I uh, was trying to decide whether to run or not. And I'm right. thinking, well, I don't know the answers to, you know, all these these big questions of the day. You know, the, the economy, taxes, property taxes. But, but you know where to get. And you know, I know that, you know, smaller... Um, smaller bit smaller government um, really is where we need to start um, and then trickle down from there but mm -hmm. uh, so yes yeah, so if I don't have the answer I will I promise that I will get you the answer I'll find someone who has the answer for there you there you go and I think most of uh, your elected officials today have that open mindedness that you can get answers from them the question is are you going to ask so there you go we're done for the day and I want to thank you Mary Pat for coming in again Thank you for having me. You're listening to Tandem Radio. This is your host, Glenn DeLake. And again, here every Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. and continuing on till noon with Tandem Radio. I'm here from 10.30 to 11, and then we have our other hosts on till noon, all talking about business. And, of course, Tandem Radio is the good news on business. And uh, each week we do our best to point you to God's scriptures and also bring you people who have golden nuggets of wisdom that can help you to get your business where you want it to be. We'll see you back here next week, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.